And it looks like we're recording. Okay, everyone, it is Gordon Einstein uh, continuing my epic, epic series of Zoom interviews or online interviews with people I find fascinating, interesting, useful, friendly, technological, all of it. And the gentleman we have this evening qualifies in every single category. It's, it's not like we're we're not taking a hit here. Uh, Siam Connor, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking the time. Say hello to everyone. Hello, Gordon. Hello, everyone. I'm very glad and pleasure being invited here by you. It's been a pleasure. Indeed. And you, you, we're, we're kind of new friends. Uh, I'll, I'll give a shout out to Robert yeah. Hoss for introducing us. Good, good man. Uh, we I did a iftar with Robert uh, back on March 15th. And you came and we chit-chatted and then we kind of went from there. And, you know, it's 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 been fast moving. It's, it's good. Uh, but you, yeah. you got a lot going on. And it's not it's not often I meet someone I'm like you have to get on the show, but you're 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 moving in a shaker. So I you know, we had to get you in. Um I, I always That's do true. with every guest. I, I I before we you're working on amazing things right now, and I have to say you're fantastically prepared. You actually sent me a list of things to discuss. But before before we get into that, before we get in the present, I want to know your superhero origin story. I wanna know where you're born, where your parents are from, where you studied. Just give me your give me your path of life up to present day Dubai. So what, what's your story? Uh, lovely. Well, uh, first of all, we are like being here in the UAE for so long. Even my uh, uh, grandfather, he was here as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, born here with a beautiful uh, Persian family as well. And we had uh, been to US, we went to Europe, we came back here in Dubai. So um, I, we set up down here in Dubai so to discover more opportunities because Dubai is actually every day is building, every day it's more opportunities, great people are coming here, residents here. So mm -hmm. I think um, it's a uh, pleasure to stay in this country to even, um, especially in technology wise, even to help it to go to that direction as well. Yeah. Well, here, let's do more details. Um, so you're born here. What did you study? Did you study? Oh, well, I studied, I studied the music. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's very uh, rare. So um, I was producing the music. I produced uh, um, music also for uh, Jason Jorlu. It was uh, very uh, great to do that. Mm -hmm. So I've been into MTVs and a couple of shows. Back then, I was a teenager, so suddenly I just found my way to the company that they offered me to become the, my sponsor for my music stuff. So I wanted to do uh, singing as well. And then from that I company... Say, I should probably mention the audience. This is all going to lead up to interesting stories about artificial intelligence and working with local royalty. So I, I probably maybe... Yeah. Should mention the beginning. You, you, you know, to really appreciate where you are now, we have to see the path Thank you. because where you are now is epic, freaking epic. Thank you. So, so you know, Thank for you. a, I don't even know how to say this. You know, we're, I don't think either one of us is ethnically Emirati, but we're both here, and you, born here, took a good advantages of the opportunities and really have gone through several iterations and versions of your life from the music, and we'll, we'll go forward. You know, you've done a lot of different things, and you've had your own. I know you've had your own challenges. We've, we've, we've talked about that. You had a, a couple of times where yeah. everything was maybe taken from you a bit. But here you are, you rally, you pull forward, and you've really situated yourself in a very unusual way. That, that, that's kind of why I want to have the, the background also. I want, to, I want to show your path, and then maybe other people who watch the show will get inspired and understand that you know where you start is not where you end up, number one. And number two, life can kind of hit you a couple of times. And if you get yourself back up, you can accomplish amazing things like you have. So the, the, just, just to set a little bit more context. So y you were doing music and... Yeah, lovely. Um, basically, life is always brings you back. It's mm -hmm. like there is a truck and you don't know where the heat comes from, but always great to stand up and follow the path. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's go to that company. And then I joined to a network marketing company with the, um, we just, it was um, actually um, from, they were from Hong Kong. Okay. So um, at the age of uh, 16, I started there. In two 16. years, I become top earner. Yeah. 
and in two years I become top earner of the company with the 10,000 uh, network and uh, like people, leaders under my hand around the world. Mm -hmm. So I had the meeting at that age, major in the garden. I had a meeting at that age with the uh, doctors, professors, and I was teaching them the marketing and stuff. So I was so like uh, proud of myself. Mm -hmm. And you know how the teenage crowds works, right? So um, I was, um, I was. I, I've heard about it. I, I don't know if I was proud of myself as a teenager, but I, it's good to know that someone. Was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then uh, it turns out the company just um, was a scam. So um, I just came out from that company, and then uh, I started my own business. Since then, mm -hmm. I never could be an employee. Never been employed in my life, by mm -hmm. the way. So I started my own company on social media. People didn't understand it back then. So I was, uh, I had a team. We were going to lounges, restaurants, companies. So they wouldn't accept us except the, uh, uh, there was uh, music channels we got and there was uh, uh, NBC channels, the movie from the local stuff. Mm -hmm. So we got them as a partners, but it wasn't enough for me. So I moved on and I went to uh, Forex. I was like, okay, the opportunity will be here. And all the way, yeah, <laughs> and by that's the way, why everyone thinks that with these screens, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by the way, the music was fading up in the road in the journey, right? So mm -hmm. the music was uh fading, and I didn't think about it so because I love the business more. And then, uh, I just went to the forex. We st I started in a uh, group channel on Telegram with the uh, my, one of my partner, the Spanish partner. So we set a goal Spanish to have a yeah. How did you connect up with a Spanish partner? Uh, he, he, his name is, was uh, Victor, by the way, yeah. Victor Hernandez. So we started the company, uh, Magnex, mm -hmm. and then uh, we had a goal for a month to achieve like uh, 50 people in our, um, in our groups because I found a way to earn money. I wanted people to earn money with me as well for free. And then in a month, we reached uh, 1,000 people. And it goes a thousand, and it goes five thousand, and it reached a hundred thousand in just uh, one year, mm -hmm. and it was mind blowing. We were doing webinars, and uh, we wanted to do seminars as well. And I had like employees, more than eighty employees around the world. And how old were you? Uh, it, I was like twenty four. Yeah. Uh, did, 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 just did, just so I can hate my life, I want to hear that. So you you were twenty four and doing the, all this, okay? Just, just so I can get, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's good to hear this stuff because then I get pissed off and jealous. I mean, I work harder. So it's fantastic. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> so so no, in a good yeah. way. It's okay. I, I use this, yeah, I use this use as adrenaline because, again, it gets me it gets me going. Um, so you're 24, year old, 24 years old. You're a master of the universe, running your own foreign exchange company with employees. A huge following. Yeah. And Exactly, and I just um, I just want to also uh, send a few informations here because we are uh, becoming so famous uh, on the internet. So we had we were working with many people, um, we were giving signals, people were earning the money, and we were just breaking down the brokers. And then the brokers approached to me. They offered like, um, let's work with us and let's do um, collaboration on the sending signals and. Uh, more deep works, which is, I don't want to say it here, but um, we didn't accept it because um, any honorable person will do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the couple of, next couple of days after that, we got hacked. Um, our social media, our uh, bank accounts, our uh, online bank accounts, our uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, everything. So actually at the it's point crazy. I was nobody. Sorry, so yeah, just, I was you're, nobody. You're doing a very successful job in Forex. You're, and, and by the way, I, I, I have to admit something. I, I always see this term, and I'm a crypto. I should know it. When you say signals, is it you mean buying recommendations into a group, or does signals mean anything else? Uh, we were just sending those signals, for example, buy the price and sell the price. Okay. So, so basically, those basically, we call it signals. Yes. Yes. Okay. We were giving them like sell at this price. So okay. this was the uh, we call it signals. 
Got it. Um, hey, if I, it I was, see that if it was thrown around, and I probably should have Googled it a long time ago. So you, you get a big following, you know, and then brokers are beginning to, to approach you to do business and maybe some other stuff. You, you yeah, give yeah. them a flight, no, no, thank you. And then you wake up one day and everything you own has been taken. Exactly. And all your communications everything. are down and you have no resources. Exactly. Exactly. So I had I had like a couple of million dollars on my account and it just um, all fade out and I couldn't follow up that. Nothing because for um, a week I was nobody. I couldn't reach anything. So um, the story, it's a lot. So I want to make a short story. Uh, and then after that, I was like, um, no way. I cannot be in online business again. Uh, so all my life I was into technologies and all this stuff. At the age of 12, I was uh, a hacker and all this stuff. So I didn't want to uh, be that again. So I wanted to do something physical. So I okay. just went to the, like... Um, Actually, you, you, uh, sorry, I think we skipped something. If you were all this at the age of 12 before your music career, are you a self-taught programmer? Yeah. Can you talk about yeah. that a little bit, please? Yeah. Actually, I started with the uh, JavaScript. And then um, I just try to know, I try to know how the games are created, how people are creating the games. Mm -hmm. I wanted to create a games at that time. And also I end up creating a music software, actually. I created an VSTs. So for, um, for producing of music, mm -hmm. I created myself back then by the codes and the sounds and everything. So it was uh, quite good. And then, I just uh, did a little bit of uh, small uh, things, like I hacked a couple of uh, websites and mm -hmm. uh, in Dubai. So since then, no, I've been you, connected you, you, you to government. Have, you administrated or ministered, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I didn't know what's going on. Okay. I know yeah. you were you were twelve. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, and then uh, after all those history and the journey. I just uh, find on myself, okay, better I focus on um, AI and blockchain and something which is, can inspire me and can inspire others. So I learned it and I learned it very deeply with the good mentors, good people, uh, good uh, courses. Mm -hmm. I took courses from Harvard universities. I uh, worked with the um, Oxford universities and the Manchester universities and me. So like I spend them all. Online courses and also physical. Really? So okay. um, I had both. Yeah, so I had both. So um, I pressured myself to learn as soon as possible to follow this journey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, amazing. That, that, that's epic. So, so you, you, you get, moving back to the portal, you got hacked, you got destroyed, you're lying on the floor, and somehow you got to where you are now. So what happened next? Uh, next, I just wanted to do something physical. I just wanted to do um, working as a uh, selling uh, stuff, which is I can touch. Yes. So I couldn't, so my body and my mindset couldn't accept something which is not exist. Okay. And that was a mistake I was did, and I wasted time. Uh, yeah. And then a friend just uh, hit me up and then he said like, uh, let's do this. I know your abilities. I know you can do many things. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And actually, he was insisting for six months. Mm -hmm. And I didn't listen to him. And then after six months, I was like, okay, I am in. Let's do it. So we started something. We couldn't uh, uh, finish it up. So I started myself a company, which is uh, Main Core AI. You know about it. Yes. And then... Uh, uh, I'm building it and it's going very far by the way it's going very well so that, that, so your current project and it's on your convenient list that you gave to me is main core right now yes yes it is okay now how did you, you you have a really diverse background and you've done a lot of things how did you get up to speed on I mean AI is the trend right now obviously but how did you get up to speed on AI and which aspects of AI would you say you're most, most interested in or fascinated by? This is an amazing question, Gordon. I'll, always I answer this. Education, the people. 
people need education. People need to learn. Mm -hmm. People need to educate themselves because I was the one who tried to educate myself, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is most needed part in our community. So it's for good for us kids, good for um, adults. So I think this is generally AI into educational. This is my main focus on this. Um, actually, I, you know, I, I don't know if I knew this, but you and I are more aligned than I realized. <laughs> That's funny. I, I'm, you know, I'm learning languages right now. You know, I'm working on German, then comes Russian, then comes Arabic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. My, my main tool, I admit it, for learning German right now is, or not my main tool, my, my, huge, huge, my tutor for German is Chat GPT. Because it's, I have all the books, I have all the videos, I have the, you know, I'm making all the flashcards. I don't understand something. I used to go on Italki and book a time with a tutor or ask my friends. Now I just ask Chat GPT, and it's beautiful. It, it, it is so good. I, like there's the German word for there's klagen and bicklagen. They both mean complain. They both mean to like uh, lament or wail about something, but they have a slight subtle difference. And I. I Google the difference and I didn't get a straight answer. And then I put the question to chat GPT and I got a beautiful answer. And it's such a subtle, nuanced difference. It's like having Aristotle sitting next to me, you know, teaching me wisdom. You know, Aristotle was quiet until I need him. And then when I need him, I just type it in and $20 a month and I get a direct, clear, technically correct answer. You know, and it, 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 it doesn't exactly. even have to think about it. I get 10 seconds later. It, it's a, I mean, I can, I can just imagine it and, you know, I want to say in 10 years, but the rate things are moving. I can just mention in two years, we're going to have real live interactive live. We're going to have AI live interactive language tutors that understand and react to you so fast. It's going to be great. Exactly. And I, Gordon, I want to share with you something which is uh, very important uh, about AI. So um, this is uh, will be our future. And after this, I never say that anywhere. And this is the first time I want to say it. Okay. Uh, we had AI. We had AI before, right? Like on, on 1958, it was started by talking about it, and it came um, long to the uh, 90s and goes to the um, uh, 2000, and people were uh, working on these things, right? Yes. So it's been it's been here in the world more than uh, like around 70 years. So this is not the this is not the my, new thing. My dad right? was working on it. My dad, you know, so, who, who was in the 70s, had books on machine intelligence and machine learning. It just the, the horsepower wasn't there. The theory wasn't there, but they were working on it. I, I know. I remember amazing. Amazing. You know, right now, the AI, the most advanced AI in the world, let's say uh, chat GPT, right? Mm -hmm. The IQ level, it's 162. Really? Um, uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, the Einstein... Um, uh, IQ was 162 as well. So the Albert Einstein. So Albert then, has, sorry, Einstein has Einstein. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's true. So, so uh, the point is from now on, from now to till the next year, every six, seven months, mm -hmm. the AI will double its IQ. So let's imagine in a couple of years, we're going to have an AI with the IQ level of around 2,000. So, I mean, are, well, okay, this it. are, are we screwed? Uh, no. So there, there is a possibility, which is the government comes in. So within these five years to 10 years, we're going to see a lot of changes within government sites, within um, the, the way how government running the countries everything will be changed because in a couple of years, we're going we're gonna to have an IQ level of 2,000, 3,000. This is except, this is except counting a quantum computers. Yes. So let's say in 10 years, we're going to have a quantum computers or next seven, six, seven years, right? And imagine that then it will come AGI and then ASI. So artificial super intelligence and you know what I mean. So uh, we, I don't want to talk about that. Like, I don't know what will be happen. No one knows. So this will be, we will talk it when the, uh, the 
uh, quantum computers uh, that are being created. Mm -hmm. So, but right now, in a couple of years, we're gonna have an IQ beside us of two thousand or three thousand. It will that you cannot even imagine. For example, right now you sit with a scientist, let's say biologic scientist, right? And then they talk about something and you don't understand it. Like, I don't get it. But imagine that AI will be something, an IQ level that the smartest person in the world cannot understand it. I can imagine. So, so it will be the smartest thing let's say, smartest uh, creature ever in the world. And this is great, and it's bad. So there is a threat, threat, and there is a um, opportunity that comes with that as well. Yeah. 100%. I, yeah, I mean, look, I, I've discussed this a lot on this show, and it, it, on one hand, it makes me excited, and on the other hand, I get this feeling in my stomach, like... Like this is the last few years of life. Not that we're all going to die, yeah. but this is, this is the last few years of me recognizing the world. You know, it's like you know, yeah. it's, it's like, and, and then that doesn't even mean that doesn't even mean that what's coming is bad. But the, all the reference points are going to get swept away. It's like someone before World War One, you know, thinking that Europe exactly. was in charge and the British Empire was going to last forever and. You know, everyone acts a certain way, and you know, if you're this race, you're this way, and but, but like your whole worldview is going to get disrupted, and it doesn't. It's not even necessarily bad, but it's going to change in a ways that we, you know, before. In, I mentioned being in 1910 Europe. You can't imagine what it's going to be like in 1950. It's just so different. Exactly. It's just so different, exactly. and you know, it's just like you're going to be disoriented, and it's. You know, as you get along in life, it's harder to be adaptable. But but I, I love you know part of part of my joy is being here in Dubai, being with smart people like you or in this industry. Thank you. And you know, you're kind of like thank you to the future. So yeah, thank and you. yeah, and you know, thank you, Gordon. And you know what? There is another thing with the government side. Mm -hmm. So I'm working like with the uh, royal families. Uh, like um, I'm also the uh, like uh, CEO, and right now I'm the partner with the Sheikh as well of mm -hmm. um, uh, Russell Paymer. So um, the point is that everything I'm seeing, it, it all will be turned back to governments, yes. the leadership. So the leadership, it's very important for the AI um, because they need to regulate the people behind the AI because we cannot regulate something which is smarter than us, right? We cannot regulate AI. AI, we cannot regulate it. It's smarter than us. We need to regulate people. We need to uh, make sure those people who's behind those AIs are regulated, being watched, and being followed. So, so I, I just had this discussion. It's actually on one of the other videos I'll, I'll share with you. We, I came up with the term, or we had a discussion where we called the double alignment issue. It's not yeah. only do you need to align the AI, but you need to align the people behind the AI, which is what you're saying. Because if the AI That's is true. disaligned with the owner, you have a problem. But if the owner of the AI is disaligned with humanity, you have a problem. And to, That's true. So to make sure that the both yeah. aligned is a real challenge. Yeah, it always go back to the person who handling those AIs. So um, I, some people they can use AI for scam others, and uh, they can do bad stuff, criminal stuff. And some people they can use it like uh, some old man or uh, Elon Musk for created stuff. So, meanwhile, we need to look for people, developers, programmers who are behind these machines. This is this is one and only subject, and other thing is not acceptable. And the governments have to push themselves to become the first thing, the first actors of these roles with these machines and other people, so they can support the startups, they can support the uh, those good programmers, they can uh, they can just watch them closely and make sh making sure they are into their box of the regulation and rules. Yes. Because because in couple of years, you have no couple of years people will not reach that level of understanding of AI, but the AI will be booming. So we are well, different right now. 
We are not. Right, so we'll, 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 let's jump into your questions because I, I want to hit your good list. And all right, <laughs> see, see, the, see, you know, make, I love these theoretical conversations and they're relevant. I just want to, but I want to get to know you and what you're doing. So I'm actually going to do something Amazing. I never do, which is I'm going to work down your list. So if I put on my glasses, Lovely. I'm going to here because you're so organized. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we yeah we can talk for many hours. I know. Yeah, so maybe we, maybe we kind of covered number one a, a bit. We said, can you tell me about your journey as an entrepreneur, especially your experience in the tech sector? I, I think I think we I think we got that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to the next one, and and you're very you're very open about the next one. You're surprisingly open, and maybe maybe you want to explain that also, which is how did your partnership with the royal families of Dubai and Ras Al Khaimah come about? And what role have they played in your entrepreneurial venture? So, I mean, l l l let me ask you a question. I know this sounds funny, but why are you comfortable talking about that? Well, because um, I am friends with them. Uh, we are like families. Uh, we we have nothing to hide. I'm always been uh, straightforward and been uh, completely honest mm -hmm. to make sure my journey reached to the level and to help the government of UAE as well, because this is like um, my country. <laughs> that, okay, yeah. th that, that's, that's a good answer. Uh, I like it, because a lot of times people are working for this or that shake's office, they, they seem to be a little hesitant or a little guarded about staying it for, for various reasons. Maybe either A, they're not real, or B, they are real, but they want to kind of protect their boss or office from all the random people who come into this country because there are a lot of random people. But you, like I said you're doing, you're doing it from kind of a patriotic point of view and to get out the message. Of course. Okay. Of course, because I'm more into tech and I'm trying to uh, talk to the people who they are into technology so I can uh, guide them, I can learn from them, I can, uh, we can build a hub and community which is, can be in contact with. So it, it goes back to the same thing. Make sure you close the people, uh, you see the people closely mm -hmm. and make sure everything it goes perfectly in a technology of each country. So I think this is very important. Very good. Okay, so let's dive into that question a little bit more. So again, how did your partnerships come about? So you said with the Royal Families of Dubai and Ras al so how did you form your relationship with them? Oh, well, uh, so my father, he was here a long time ago, so my grandfather, so... We are just connected by the families and we've been always been connected. And then one day we just sit there and we talk about how, what can I do, how they can help to, uh, this technology goes further. So we start to work together. That's great. And I, 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 think, I think, you know, you and I went out to breakfast last week and, and I think the impression yeah. I got is that they're, I mean, it's not there. I feel hesitant talking about it because I'm new here and I don't know what the rules are, but I, I, it sounds like they're generally friendly people. And if they and if they like you and they trust you, things can move quickly and you can get things done. Is, is that fair to say? Uh, well, uh, first, uh, first things, uh, they will read the people. So you have to, they, they have to know what, what exactly they're talking about and they have to read those subjects so they will they will research for these and then they will yeah they will move on with that but i think they're so friendly and so open to the technology to the people so this is a very good point thank you gordon for uh, I'm, I'm just i'm trying to understand because i'm still I, I, I think if there's like layers of the onion i'm on the outside looking in i've made good progress in my brief time here but you know i'm not born here i don't speak arabic you know American white guy, yeah. you know, it's like, I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. And the second part of your question is, what role do they play in your entrepreneurial ventures? So these royal families, Dubai and Ras al how yeah. do they interact with your ventures? Actually, they allow me to go further deeply to the market of uh, technologies, to build technologies, to um, just interact the people who are, who are, in the government side and in tech side, even the uh, police. So uh, this is good. This is like mutual trust. And when they trust you and you know you are one of them and they will uh, back up you to go to the best position that you really deserve. They always support this thing.
I, I and I, I think my impression is when you get to a certain level of the the shakes, they're very patriotic. They they want the country to succeed. They're not just sitting back. So they, I, I think they look for talented people they trust and to excel to accelerate their own agendas. Yes. Exactly, hundred percent. Really, they're, they're they're not they're not sitting back and just enjoying life. They seem to be working pretty hard. Okay, so the the next question is: Tell me about Main Core Limited, uh, or Main Core AI Limited. What established? What inspired you to establish the company, and what sets it apart in the market? I, I love. I just get to read your questions. So tell me more about Main. Yeah, Core. yeah. Actually, Main Core it just came from the Main Core of technology. So. It's, it will become a, a company which is the hub of technology. So we don't say we don't want to, we want to build an AI or blockchain. We want to be innovating stuff. So innovation is the first thing. Mm. That's why I name it main core of innovations in technologies. So um, the inspiration just came from that uh, educational. I just wanted to have someone to be with me 24 seven Mm. And to educate me and to whatever I want, it supported me in uh, all the sections, all the sectors, everything. So it's like, it's like you know, that person which is, knows everything, the best advisor, right? The best assistant. So yes. it just came to my mind to do that. Then I built a team. I created uh, good people, uh, good co-founders as well. So we built these things from the scratch to make it like um, good innovations of the technology hub. So the inspiration just came from those uh, sites. So who's your, if you can, who's your co-founder and what's your team? Uh, well, um, I would like to say it maybe later, but uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind, which is whatever. I, I, I know you're a little Thank bit you. in stealth mode. Where maybe I'm maybe I'm the first public show where you've even said the name, so that's great. And then um, what inspired you to establish the company? I think it was, I think it was education. What, what sets it apart in the market? Oh, well, uh, innovating. Like always I was thinking about um, how we can innovate uh, new stuff. Like... Um, Thinking about the technology, it's just uh, one thing, and building a team and good people behind those technologies is another thing. So I think these two and the leadership, these three things will be a very main, uh, very main subject in the company, which is, makes it different. And I, I, I think you actually anticipate the question a little bit more in your next question. You said, "Can you can you elaborate on the three main innovations your company has made in AI, particularly creating the AI?" generating smart contracts and deploying them. So can you talk about that? The artificial intelligence intersection with blockchain and smart contracts. Exactly. So uh, actually we generated like uh, three innovations that we never had it before. So it's an uh, AI that creates AI. So mm -hmm. right now inside a market, um, if Gordon Lindstein wants to um, create an uh, AI, he have to find a developer or programmer to do that for him, to yes. do that for uh, for you. So, and meanwhile, they're asking a lot of money. So for the creating those, programming those AIs, and also deploying them and functioning them and also supporting them and updating them. So it would be a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, um, works to do. Yes. And it's not easy and it's very costly. You know that. So um, I was thinking to make it easy for people, for uh, people who just want to have an AI. Mm -hmm. And so we created an AI to create AI. Very simple. So it could be right now, it's an assist, assist AI. Mm -hmm. But in the future, I was, I'm, I'm thinking to make it more advanced, more um, into uh, involving into way of uh, real assistance uh, partner so okay. this will be yeah so you can I, create I, I think, AI once, I think once you have ai that's capable and friendly attached to your neural link life is going to get very interesting yes yes this will be in the future yeah not we can, that far. i mean we have it now yeah not that far not that far. I love it, that. it's I, you know all all these i mean I, look I, I said this on some other shows and maybe i said it to you i, I had a great deal of frustration 
in the 80s, 90s, and the early 2000s where the world did not seem to be moving into the future fast enough. We were just kind of wasting time. Or, every, or all the innovations happened on a screen and not in the physical world. I am happy and a little bit scared to say that's now changing. I am seeing the physical world moving into the future. You know, especially with yeah. the robots, you know, especially with drones, uh, especially with AI and industrial machinery and, you know, with the exactly. Apple Vision and everything else, we're now seeing a physical future, which is kind of cool. It's like finally, 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 it's aesthetically beginning to look like the future a little bit, especially in Dubai. Maybe that's part of the reason also. And so, you know, I would have said, you know, a nice friendly AI talking to your brain through Neuralink is like the Matrix. You know, good luck. That's 15, 20 years ago. Now I think it's five years away. Maybe. Yeah. You know, we'll see. Actually, but talk, talk about like, the smart contract part. Uh, yeah. So, um, on the other hand, we did, we create an AI with a great algorithm to create a smart contract on our own blockchain. So this is, was an amazing innovation, by the way. So right now, anyone with a um, uh, with a good KYC, if we manage to have a KYC, if they can manage to do that, so they can um, uh, interact with our AI mm -hmm. and just request a new um, smart contract. And the, the AI itself, our AI, it will deploy it to the blockchain and done. It will straight go to the market. It will create you uh, the names if you want. It will create mm -hmm. you the rules, the securities, the safeties first. And then you can choose um, everything else, the quantities, the how it works, the functionality. You can just write and we create the codes and deploy it on the blockchain and live. And you're going to have a token for yourself, for your business, for your uh, family, business, or anything. And it's not costly at all. And we will support it on the uh, all, all the way. You know what? You just gave me an idea for a business that we'll discuss yeah. in person tomorrow. You, you just gave me an idea. We'll, we'll, we'll see if it's an original yeah. idea. That, that's very cool. <laughs> um, so, okay. So generate yeah. the smart contract and deploy them. That, that's neat. Okay, let's get to your next question. Have you had collaborations with major international companies like Forbes and Microsoft? And how has that contributed to the growth and success of your ventures? I, I love just reading this stuff. So tell me about Forbes, Microsoft, and all that other good stuff. Oh, did I lose you? For everyone who's watching, hopefully Siam will come back in a second here. Yeah. Oh. I yeah, lost you for a second. I can hear you. Uh, I'm waiting yeah, for you. I actually... How my voice, you... Oh, really? Okay, you know, it's all right. You're, you're back. Say hi. It's all good? Now it is. Okay, all so right. I whatever you just answered, Amazing. Again, we're going to do it again. Are, are you interacting with companies like Forbes and Microsoft? How is that going? What has that done? All right, so I've been invited by the Forbes and to just uh, the FinTech to talk about uh, technology and all this stuff. So it's end up to find a good friends and good people there. Mm -hmm. So I become the business counselor with them. So uh, it's been great. So I found a lot of uh, connections, good network and good people around. So they could uh, be involved with the main core as well. So to build it better even. Is and that Forbes Middle East market. or is it something online or which Forbes? Uh, the Cyprus. Cyprus, okay. Right. Yeah, and then um, and then also the uh, Microsoft. We built an uh, applications like a um, long time ago, and uh, we sold it there, and they bought it from us. That music application. So it was uh, very great about it. Yeah. Well, so we're, we're talking <laughs> years and years and years ago, back in your JavaScript days. Yeah. The music exactly. did. Microsoft bought it. Exactly. Exactly. How old were you? Uh, 13. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was amazing. You're, 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 you're hurting me, my friend, but I'm, I'm very proud of you. Okay, now that's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, and then, um, so here's something else I'm, I'm happy that you're comfortable talking about. What, what, when it comes to blockchain and crypto and AI, what's your interaction with the UAE government and the local police? 
Yeah, actually, um, I was at the office with the uh, very great uh, gentleman, and he was connected with the Dubai police as well. So he said, like, um, um, I like you. I want to give you a uh, job offer at the police station. So let's go there and talk. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, I go there and we sit on the table. I talk to captains and about technology and everything. So I did a couple of AIs and then uh, we collaborated together on the uh, governance and then uh, uh, like uh, city traffic and all this stuff. So it's been amazing. So it's so, been an amazing collaboration. So one, the, my impression as someone new here, and I think it's kind of true, is that everything you do, I assume everything I do is being watched and recorded. And yeah, and I actually don't mind. I, I It sounds bizarre because I'm from the U.S. and I would describe myself as a libertarian, but there's, I, I've, I've come to the personal conclusion that maybe... Maybe it's, maybe it's an age thing. I don't really know. I've come to the personal conclusion that there's different kinds of freedom. And I was in Los Angeles where I did not feel, I think I felt physically safe, but I was concerned for my family being physically safe. And, you know, stores are being broken into by mobs and they're stealing all the iPhones and all the Nikes and, and the yeah. Locker and all this other stuff. And I don't necessarily trust, I hate to say, I don't trust the law enforcement, the tax authorities, it's just like the, the trust is much lower. And some of it is we're being told to have lower trust, propaganda, but some of it's just reality. It, it is, you know, when I grew up as a higher trust society, now it's a lower trust society. I kind of, if the, maybe I'm bad, but you know, if, if, the, if the price for physical security and working on business and working with people and collaborating with them and getting stuff done is a level of surveillance. You know, and I, by the way, I don't have to be here. I'm here on a visa. Okay. I don't live here. I'm not an Emirati. Mm-hmm. You know, I can leave as far as I know. Okay. And they can kick me out as far as I know. So it's like we're, we're, we're kind of making a deal. It's not like I'm, I'm not a slave here. I came here by choice. So I'm in the contract and I'm here. So I, I'm, I don't really appreciate everything is being reported and everything's being monitored. And I'm okay with it. I, I wonder what happens when you pair a with that. All right. The pair, the pair AI with those, um, you mean those, um, all right. So, um, actually, um, it's, um, it's something which is, um, uh, they should know about you everything. This is the first thing. So always it comes where you burn, how you grew up and who, who they know, what's your background. Mm-hmm. So when you have all of these stuff behind you and they can read you easily, and you have nothing uh, wrong, and you never did something mistake in a country um, or on a criminal side, so it, you will be always be supported, always, 100%. Mm-hmm. And even those the government side, it doesn't matter you're from U- U.S. or um, you're uh, like local mm-hmm. or anything. Everyone will be at the same equal size, and even though... Um, banks and governments helping you to grow your business or grow your uh, um, ideas and to be more uh, effective in the country. So this is this is the support that comes from the government and the good leadership behind it. This is what I believe. The leadership is very important. How they are very uh, down to earth and they can stay and listen to your needs, to your words. Mm-hmm. And if you're really the one person that you're talking about, you will you will get those supports 100%. So Actually, this is good even for the audience. You know what, you're, you're giving me a very, can I, can, let, me, let me spit that back to you. You're, you're, you're giving yeah, me yeah. an interesting thought I haven't had before, which is China's social credit system all the monitoring, all the surveillance, all the facial recognition, all the the whole thing makes me nervous and uncomfortable. And I think it makes everyone nervous and uncomfortable. And I think people say otherwise are pretty much lying. The, the capabilities, the capability here are similar, especially if you compare it with AI. But there's an important distinction that you made that I hadn't thought of until just now, which is the position of the UAE and the position of China are very different in that the UAE needs to, it's, it's given its demographics, the UAE needs to 
bring in non-UAE talent, have them be here, have them be happy, have them be, be productive. And if they're not happy and they're not productive and they don't feel safe and they feel like the system's abusive, they're going to leave. It's not like China, where there's you know less than a billion people or just about a billion people have no choice. The, the, the people who are here, for the most part, can leave. So, it's, so the motivations, the incentives of the government are different. There, which I think you, you were saying nicely, which is that they can use the surveillance in the AI to sort of gently help you. And if you don't like yeah. it, you can go. You can go. You know, I don't need to be here. Yeah. You know, get on a plane and go. Yeah. Go. So it, it's, yeah. it's a great point. It, That's you know, true. You use, given the competitive situation of the UAE, you know, both, you know, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, you know, kind of compete and cooperate. The UAE kind of competes and cooperates with Bahrain and Qatar. They cooperate and compete with Saudi, you know, this all competing with the rest of the world. It, it, it's AI can be a competitive advantage in attracting and keeping talent. That's true. I, I give you another story, amazing story. So just uh, let's go back to, um, let's say the tribes, like the ancient times, right? The, 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 the first humans. So there was a tribe, right? So it tribes or each village do more hunting right mm -hmm. they could feed their uh, they could feed their village with more days than the others who not do hunting yes right and so uh this this makes them the difference on the power on the energy on information and um knowing the location as well so uh let's talk let's bring it now to uh to new world to our world right okay so each country goes first to know more about ai to deploy more ais on the system on the government side on the private side and the company sectors you know they will be more successful than those companies who didn't start it or they will start it later so yeah. they will get more ideas of this and uh, the other countries will get very less so in in a couple of years uh, i told you com uh, countries Oh, they will talk about the power, power of tech. So we will not then talk about power of um, uh, money or cash. This will be completely gone. Because we're uh, going to have new I, things. I, I think money and cash is, will be... Like Bitcoin is the merger of money and technology, right? 100%, 100 yes. I mean, mon money is not going to go away. It's just going to change. Yes, yes. This is what I mean, 100%. Okay. Yeah, but... But the main thing is like that exactly, you said it amazingly, the technology will talk. Mm -hmm. So who, who sooner into technology will be more powerful and can feed their people easier and better and become uh, on top of the other countries. So it's always been with us. Actually, I think everything that we do as humans in our own times, it's exactly the same thing. Every time is the same thing. Back it then, is. we will just do hunt more, feed more. Right now, be on more on technology and um, uh, make sure of people are more safe. And I think this is uh, this is very cool about humidity. <laughs> you, you know what? You just gave me another thought that maybe I had bouncing around in my brain, but it wasn't articulated until you just said it. Which is, we're kind of going. Maybe AI is like another revolution. Like we had the, we were hunter gatherer. Then we had the agricultural revolution, and it made us do yeah. city. And the industrial revolution kind of moved, moved us out of agriculture into machines, you know. And the information revolution, you know, got us into virtual. And maybe AI is the next human shift. And that's true. And you know, you're, you're making me think. But when the, when the industrial revolution happened, it didn't happen all at once. It was spread out, and then it gained course and it became, it became normal um i think it has exactly. to happen faster but it's it's going to be a big change on, on par with exactly. the industrial revolution exactly. that's true so imagine imagine in a couple of years you're going to have an iq beside yourself on your phone anywhere with the iq level of 2000 3000 so we're going to talk about something extraordinary something which is you think, how can I build a sandpit of uh, diamonds and mix with uh, bones of this animal? So yeah. it gives you exactly those um, ingredients 
and a recipe to do that. So this is insane. This is unbelievable. I think for, for everyone watching, it's not just that you'll have it. It's not just that you'll have the 2000 IQ robot. Your wife will have it also. To think what that's going to be like. So <laughs> 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 wow. Well, let's run. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's right. Scary. Now, now yeah. you got two people in your life who know everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes the neuroscience. It goes yeah. the chip to your mind. Then that's it. Then everything works uh, with a high level of IQ. Yeah, this is this is unbelievable world we are talking. And you will see in a couple of years how government will uh, fully shifting and fully focusing on these things. It's yeah. not happening yet. Just just give it two three years. That's it. It's, I think I think I think it's like crypto. It it goes quietly for a while. There's people involved. Then it, it begins to talk about it. And then a lot of people who don't know what they're talking talk about it. And then it goes quiet for a little while, and then it blasts forward. I, I think. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of an AI hype cycle, but I also think it's real, and it's exponential. I think. I think the hype cycle will, will be very short here. We may get disappointed in a year or two because there's maybe a little micro pause, but then it's going to be like boom. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to take twenty years, in my opinion. That's true. No, um, no. Just, just give it five to ten years. That's it. Amazing. You, you know what? I, I I don't have time to go through all your questions because we're at the normal Amazing. length of the show. But I, I I'm gonna request. I'm gonna book you now. We're gonna bring you on for part two. Uh, Amazing. In a couple of weeks and and go deeper on these topics and go through your list completely and, and add a few more questions because th th this this is fascinating and it's very neat to have yeah, someone that will be show. amazing please will, will, you, will you accept my kind invitation it's a it's a pleasure it's a pleasure talking to you gordon your amazing friend very smart lovely and the best lawyer i ever seen so you're one of the best and it's a pleasure of mine wow really. i didn't you know and, hey, audience, and, i didn't pay him to say that he's just He's just yeah. Truth. yeah, and and yeah, <laughs> and I <laughs> and I really want us to talk about together in a podcast, maybe somehow. Mm -hmm. So we question each other, and so we can learn more from each other, and then we can, even though advise uh, young people, young generations, to do better things for themselves than for uh, others. So best always thing is that to work on yourself. I think. To learn more, discover more, be curious. This is all I think is the best. I, I, I think that's very wise. I, th I think no matter what happens, let me agree yeah. with you. I, I love the idea you said. I mean, my, my point of view, and I, I always say it to Arena, my wife, and I always say it to other people, and I say it to myself, is if you're ever faced with a problem with another person, go work on yourself. The, the, answer, is always, the answer is always to go to the gym. The answer is always to study more. The answer is always to develop yourself. The, always, the answer is always to do martial arts. It's like, you know, the, the answer to everything is yourself. You know, and then, That's and then true, 100%. It comes into alignment, so I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's like, don't, don't fight Amazing. with anyone except for yourself. You know? Amazing. That's true. That's true. Okay, okay. I, I'm going to stop the That's recording just because I'm, I'm going way over time. Amazing. Now. Hold on one second here. Okay, bye, everyone. We're going to be back for episode two. Bye-bye, everyone.